Well, good evening and welcome. Uh, my name is Lyle Williams. I'm the curator of prints and drawings here at the McNay and the organizer of four exhibitions that we've put together to celebrate the San Antonio's 300th anniversary called 100 Years of Printmaking. Um, and I have the great honor and privilege of introducing our speaker tonight, Kent Rush, who is the third installment of the series. His work is the third installment. Kent grew up in Hayward, California, in the East Bay, near San Francisco. Uh, he studied with some really enviable, very important uh, California contemporary artists, including Robert Bechtel at the California College of Arts and Crafts, where he received his BA. Uh, in the 1970s, another enviable thing that Kent got to do was study with a great printmaker, master printmaker, Garrow and Tresian at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. Um, I'm going to keep this really short because I know uh, uh, Kent has a lot of territory to cover. But uh, one of the things I've thought a lot about with this, with this series of exhibition uh, is how interconnected a lot of this is. You know, the first in the, sh in, the, in the series was Mary Bonner, and of course she was a very good friend of, of Mrs. McNay's. The second in the series was Bill Riley, who was so close to Mrs. McNay that uh, he called her Auntie Marion. And now with Kent, uh, he arrived on the grounds of the McNay in, 19, in the 1970s and actually founded the printmaking program at the San Antonio Art Institute. So the first three artists at least have this extremely strong connection to the history of, of this institution. So it's, it's very gratifying to see you know, this sense of community. And in fact, uh, Kent and I were standing at the back of the hall this evening and to see all of the people you know, who, who ha have known him these many years come in and just give him a warm abrazo, that was just great to see. Um, so, uh, Again, talking about that sense of community and that interconnectedness, I think Kent will probably elaborate on that. Uh, 40 years of printmaking in San Antonio. So please join me in welcoming Kent Rush to the podium. Well, thank you all for being here this evening. Is it still raining outside? Yeah. Can you hear me okay? They've got a mic on me, so. Um, and thank you, Lyle, for that nice introduction. Um, and I want to thank the McNay for uh, including me in this uh, series of four exhibitions. Uh, it's quite an honor. Um, I have to start off with some disclaimers. Um, the first and most important is that this is not a history of printmaking in San Antonio over the last 40 years. I didn't do any research on printmaking. This is strictly a random collection of very self-indulgent thoughts and recollections of what I kind of saw from my end of things that were happening in printmaking in San Antonio and uh, definitely for, primarily from the institutions that I worked at. Um, so somebody else is going to have to write the history of printmaking in San Antonio. but. Uh, um, also, this talk is not about me or my work. I hope you didn't come here for that. However, um, what I'd like to do is after this is over at 7.30, I'd like to segue up to the Lawson Print Gallery where my show is, and I would be extremely happy uh, to answer questions and to talk about my work um, as much as you'd like after this talk is over. So. And uh, one more, um, I apologize up front that I'm not able to include all of the wonderful and talented and creative people uh, that I've worked with over the years. Uh, probably I'm able to include maybe 1 20th of uh, all the people that I've worked with over the years. So uh, if I don't include you, um, I apologize uh, profusely. Uh, the other thing I need to say, too, is a lot of these people n aren't necessarily printmakers today. Some of them printed when they were in school, some printed after school, and uh, some continue to print, some don't. So I'm not saying that all the people that I'm going to include in here are printmakers per se, that, you know, but uh, 
hopefully if they all get famous enough, they can afford to go to Heron Hound Press or up to Austin and get some prints made for them. Because I know they all love printmaking so much that they want to make more and more. So I see a lot of printmakers and friends of mine in the audience. How, how many of you know something about prints? Okay, good. This is a friendly audience. So, um, If you're a collector, get out your notebook because there's going to be a lot of exciting stuff in here. So, so anyway, the, the big question is why printmaking? Why does the McNay continue to show prints? Why do they have a print collection? Uh, why do they have this show? Um, my analogy is that printmaking is to the art world what bluegrass music is to the music world. Not everybody likes it or appreciates it, but it has a very strong and devoted following, both in the world of the collector appreciator and of the creators. To me, it's uh, fascinating and beautiful. Um, you know, I respond automatically to prints, not just because they're prints, but just because uh, Prints and the look of prints um, is very different, I think, from the look of drawings, paintings, uh, sculptures, and things like it has. It, ha it has intrinsic qualities, I think, that I respond to. And as far as I'm concerned, in my uh, practice in printmaking, I'm not the, the fact that I can make multiples of a print, like that I can make ten of them or two hundred of them or whatever, is not the issue with me, and I don't think it is with most contemporary printmakers, I think the thing that really interests printmakers is the fact that um, printmaker, printmaking offers such a, an incredible array of different kinds of techniques and processes that can create looks and modes of image construction that are not available in, in other means. Okay, let's see here. Um, if I can work this. Why printmaking? So that was a handbill that I picked up at a conference. That's one reason. And uh, my friend Wayne Kimball uh, did a, an exchange portfolio years ago, and this was the title of the portfolio, which I think kind of sums it all up for us makers. Uh, the artist inker's almanac of grinding, scratching, biting, tearing, scraping, rolling, pushing, and crushing. Um, I respond to beautiful drawing, and uh, Sarah Fox, who's in the audience tonight, and I'm sure you all know her, in fact, she just did an artist talking on art uh, presentation here at the McNay, and I think her spider web is still up, okay? And uh, she took to printmaking and uh, drawing, this is a drawing on a 24 by 36 inch litho stone, huge drawing, very sensitively done. Uh, and then Juan de Dios Mora uh, had a show here. You, you should all be familiar with his work. He had a show down in the Paperworks Gallery. Uh, does wonderful, wonderful engraved uh, lino cuts. Uh, Margarito Urquiza, who is down in Monterrey, Mexico. Um, this is an intaglio print. Intaglio prints just have this kind of just rich, rich, velvety kind of quality that uh, is impossible to get any other way. Um, Ken Hale's not a San Antonio artist, but um, he was up in Austin, and I think he showed enough here in San Antonio that he had a lot of influence. The uh, fact is he had a show uh, here at the McNay. Uh, and uh, some, some of these things, like those washes in the background, those are idiosyncratic um, water washes that come in lithography. It's just one of the cool things that lithography does that uh, you don't get in another medium. So I came down from the University of New Mexico. Uh, I graduated in 1975, and uh, that summer I came down here and interviewed for this job to be the printmaker and set up the printmaking program at the San Antonio Art Institute. So this is what the Jones Building looked like when it was brand new in 1975. And uh, that's Andrew Jendrzejewski's truck there. He, just, he was a new teacher too, he was a sculpture teacher. And this is what it looks like today. And uh, of course, you know, the uh, San Antonio Art Institute folded in the late 80s. And uh, so the, this building now is the administrative headquarters for the McNay. So it's, it's a beautiful building. This is the way it was at the very beginning when I first came down here. Uh, the director, head of the board, was uh, Major General Alden Waite, who was, uh, I think, a five-star general who had uh, been in charge of chemical warfare for Eisenhower or something like that. But he, 
Hmm? Two stars, a major two, Okay. Thank you for that clarification. I like to exaggerate. But uh, he was the one that got the money from uh, Bishop uh, Jones uh, to build the building. That's why they call it the Jones Building. And uh, he was about five feet tall and 90 pounds, but he was a fiery character. And uh, this is what the inside of the uh, foyer looked like there. And we used to use it for exhibitions back in those days. That's a faculty show. There's a uh, a couple of my prints right in front of that woman's lips there, and then uh, to the right of that is a painting by Carl Embry, which belongs to the McNay, I believe, the sewing machine. And then to the right of that is a painting by Jerry Alexander. This is myself and Andy Zendrzejewski being interviewed on TV, probably KSAT or Ken's, uh, because we were the new kids on the block in 1976. Margaret Pace is the one that was responsible for bringing me down here. She interviewed me up at University of New Mexico when I was still there, and uh, she was the one that was interested in get a printmaking program at the Art Institute. And uh, so I have a feeling that she's the one that put up the money to have the print studio. And, um, I think uh, Leonard Lair had just moved down in 1974 to start the art department at UTSA, and I think she might, this is what I think, that she might have talked to Leonard. Leonard knew me from New Mexico, and so he might have suggested my name to her. But uh, she was very uh, kind and supportive of me. And This is what uh, the room looked like when I got it in 1975, and then I had to teach classes in J January of 76. So um, up on the left is Sue Shields. Some of you, if you're old timers, right, remember her. She's uh, Josie Neal's mother. And this is what uh, Kate Carey's office looks like, the same room uh, now. <laughs> of course, you have to remember, this is before, uh, this is when Cementville was Cementville, and it wasn't the Alamo Quarry Theaters. Um, this is when you could still see the tower at the Pearl Brewery. And Sama had not moved into the old Lone Star Brewery. And they hadn't bulldozed down the hips bubble room to make 17 more parking spaces in the parking lot at the medical center. Uh, and this was before the 1984-85 winter uh, where we had a record 13 inches of snowfall in San Antonio. And it was before they moved the Fairmont Hotel from behind uh, what is now River Center Mall to make room for River Center Mall, and it moved down south of La Villita. It was the biggest, the largest brick building that had ever been moved at its time. Uh, it could be, yeah. So Mary Bonner was the one that started this uh, four artist series. You probably, hopefully, all saw her show. So she was one of the first major printmakers here in San Antonio, and then Bill Riley, um, made prints, and you saw his show. They include a lot of his paintings. This, I believe, is a, I'm going to say it's a dry point uh, with hand coloring. And then my, my work, which is up now. And then, excuse me, um, Michael Menchaca will be the next, uh, uh, the fourth artist in the series. He'll open October 18th, and I've heard rumors that he's going to do a large installation. So that sounds fun. Uh, when I got to town, uh, Jim Stoker was teaching and making prints. He was teaching at Trinity University, um, making prints. And uh, he had a student, uh, Jose Guadiana, who had moved up from Mexico and had actually been trained in printmaking in Mexico. So he was uh, working there at Trinity. And I've always kind of followed uh, Jose's uh, career, uh, primarily as a printmaker, but he was also a painter. Wayne Kimball was here when I got here. Uh, he came down in 73 or 74 to set up the printmaking studio at UTSA. Um, this is actually a contemporary photograph of Wayne. When he came down here, he had more hair. <laughs> and you can see what, when he was down here, he kind of picked up on the San Antonio and South Texas uh, aesthetic of furniture made with cow horns and stuff. Leonard Lair was the uh, art department chairman at UTSA, and uh, he did a lot of prints using water washes, and Wayne Kimball printed them for him. 
uh, and the McNay commissioned Leonard uh, to do this uh, beautiful lithograph of the entryway of the McNay estate here. This was an early show and it kind of um, shows you who some of the people, you know, the few people who were doing printmaking, Molly Denman Branton, Ray Chavez, some of you may remember, Wayne Kimball was here, Leonard Lair, Margaret Ursula Mullins, Lee Newberry uh, was teaching screen printing at the Southwest School. Richard Rogers, you remember the sculptor, uh, myself, and Beatriz Sanchez, who was at this time teaching at Trinity University. And of course, uh, John Leeper, who was uh, the power behind printmaking here at the McNay. Uh, he was the director here for 25 years? 37. Hmm? 37 years, okay, yeah. And uh, he amassed an amazing print collection and had lots of print shows and uh, he and I both love prints. Uh, remember one occasion where he pulled out a whole bunch of prints and the brown wing and we put them on easels and then he and I both talked about them in front of an audience and he talked about them from an art historical point, viewpoint and I talked about them from a technical viewpoint. And so, as you can see, it's one of the finest collections of prints in the Southwest. Uh, some of you may remember crazy Charlie Winans. He was one of my first students in, at the Art Institute. Um, Diana Cardenas, we knew her as that then. Uh, now she's uh, Diana Rodriguez Hill. She does beautiful work. Sue Shields, I mentioned before. She had, she made these beautiful kind of Matisse-esque drawings. She was amazing. Uh, Joe Salick, who was a good friend of John Leeper's, and he was the director of the uh, San Pedro Playhouse. Um, and so he did this whole series using Xerox transfers of uh, him in playing various roles and costumes. They're pretty funny. He had a good sense of humor. Um, there was a period where I left San Antonio for three years um, and went back to California. But after I left, um, uh, Peter Nichol put this show together. And uh, I don't know where the show was. Do you remember, Richard? I think it was here at the Center of Arts. Okay. And um, so, but most of these people were people that I had started out in printmaking. So, um, see if I can do this. Uh, that's Peter Nickel. He took over printmaking when I left. And then uh, we have Anita Valencia, Nellie Buell, who had a studio out in uh, Comfort, uh, Wanda Cavillage. Uh, Diana Rodriguez Hill uh, and uh, Richard Kahn, who was not my student, so I can't claim him as a student. Richard Mogus, who's here tonight. Hernan Alvarez, who I don't remember teaching in printmaking, but I remember him being a painting student. And then I need to mention that Joanne Wogatsky, uh, Joanne was probably one of the reasons I decided to take this job because uh, when they all, when I came down to interview, they all took me out to the country club for lunch and. She was just such a fun person. She had a great personality. She laughed a lot and uh, very smart. And plus she had a big print collection. And, uh, and then she, she was uh, very supportive of my career um, all the years that we were here. Unfortunately, we lost Joanne about a year and a half ago. Joe Salick and uh, Alden Waite, the director. So um, I think Anita Valencia sent me that uh, photograph of that announcement, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, while I was teaching at the Art Institute here, I did offer to make some prints for some of the faculty. So on the left, you, some of you remember Reggie Rowe, Jerry Alexander was the ceramics instructor, and then uh, General Alden Waite um, did that little sleigh ride thing. In 79, this is what the faculty looked like. Um, this, we're all sitting in the back of my camper shell. Oops. Um, that's Carl Embry, Reggie Rowe, myself, Jerry Alexander, and George Perina, who later became the director of the school. And this gentleman, who only stayed around for about a year, um, Mark Stevens. And I don't know what's become of Mark Stevens. But. Um, so Peter Nichol took over teaching printmaking after I went back to California for a while. He's still making prints up in Austin. He and I actually went to school. We were contemporaries together at, uh, at uh, UT Austin. Uh, Bob Sennhauser, um, 
took over for a while and taught. He did uh, photography and printmaking and uh, book art. And so this is kind of an artist book that he did, uh, one of the pages from it. And then Leslie Kopcho, I think, was one of the more powerful instructors. She was here for, I'm going to say, five or six years um, when they moved the printmaking studio into the old ceramic studio. What's the name of that building? It's not there anymore. Do you remember? That? Okay. But uh, now she, she segued up to uh, LSU, and she's been there working with Kimberly Art, heading their print program. And she comes to San Antonio every once in a while. She never comes to see me, but she visits. Uh, she goes to Heron Hound Press uh, to have prints made there. And while I was teaching here uh, from 79, or excuse me, from uh, 76 to 79, I did a little moonlighting, and sometimes they wanted me to teach a course or two out at UTSA. So um, I went out to UTSA to, I think I taught design once, and then I taught some printmaking classes, but there were some people, uh, Marilyn Lanfer, you all know Marilyn, she was making some wonderful prints with Wayne Kimball. These are acid tint lithographs. Patty Ortiz was in a summer class that I taught, and she was experimenting with photolithography. And uh, I don't know if any of you here know Jamie Jackson. I can't remember what her current name is, but uh, she was a character. Miguel Cortinas got his MFA out at UTSA, and uh, he's important here in San Antonio because he taught printmaking at the uh, Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center for years, and then I think he's the head of the art department at uh, University of the Incarnate Word. Um, after Wayne Kimball left UTSA, Alan Weinstein uh, taught. He was primarily an Intaglio artist. Uh, and then after him, Randa Newland. Um, then Randa Newland got a job at RISD and went out there. And then she, for, a, for a long time, she was head of the, the RISD's program in Rome. Some of the shows, there were shows of prints in those days. Uh, this one, I think I already showed you a, a different version of this, uh, shown out at the Health Science Center. And um, Sama did a show of uh, paperworks. It wasn't necessarily work, it wasn't prints necessarily. Um, excuse me. Sally Booth uh, was the curator. She's the one that put it together. It was a, a show of Texas artists, but you can see up there who some of these artists, some of them are San Antonio. Well, Ken Hale's from Austin, uh, Marilyn Lanfear. Um, I can hardly read it from here. Randa Newland, yeah, she was teaching at UTSA. Jan Tips, uh, Kent Rush. Anybody else from San Antonio? Michael Tracy's up there. And then I just put this down here because, as you all know, we lost Adair uh, about a year ago, and she was pretty wonderful. And I don't think most people knew that she was uh, director of a museum in her past. She was a very sweet lady and a, and a philanthropist. This was a show at Charlton Gallery. Um, Ann Alexander ran the Charlton, and I believe this was when it was down on the River Walk, uh, right up from Kangaroo Court. Um, there's uh, Deanna Cardenas, Dennis Olson, Kent Rush in that show. Uh, after Blue Star started, the Blue Collar Gallery, which was run by Gary Shafter and Holly Moe, uh, had this print show. Sorry, I keep pressing the wrong button. Jesse Amato, Miguel Cortinas. They spelled Jose's last name wrong. Jose Wadiana. I'll say they. I don't think I typed. I didn't have a typewriter. Richard Mogan. <laughs> Dennis Olson. John Schultz was one of our MFA students. You all know Henry Stein, Terry Abanez, Diana Cardenas. Uh, Brenda Greer was one of our MFA students, Ken Hale from Austin, and Lance Letcher from Austin, uh, Susie Olson, Anita Valencia, and Donna Zarbin Byrne was also one of our MFA students out at UTSA. So prints were being shown. Uh, this is a show that was at SAMA of some Texas printmakers. Um, this is a show that Dennis and I put together of uh, prints from American universities. And of course, the McNay always had print shows. They were always doing stuff. This is one that we did jointly with UTSA because I found these 
prints from the Holy Land, these lithographs, in our special collections. And I talked to Lyle, and so we organized this show. It's pretty fun. This has nothing to do with prints, but I just thought historically it would be fun for you people to know that before Blue Star, there were lots of other artist-run um, venues for people to show. And a lot of these were very powerful, and they were, the, they were kind of what kept us all going for years. Of course, the oldest one is the San Antonio Art League. Then there was the Men of Art Guild, and that's an interesting history if you want to look that up. Uh, the Eighth Street Group and uh, Som Somoma. Uh, that's an interesting history, too. Woodlawn Co-op, the Artist Alliance, Los Angeles Heights Gallery, Art Cellar, and the Shone Davenport. So uh, we need to get a graduate student to write a thesis about the history of, uh, of the development of the art world in San Antonio, I think, at some point. So like I said, I went, um, I went back to California. Primarily, I wanted to get a gallery in California, so I went back and uh, I got two galleries. That was cool. One of them I well, both of them I actually kept showing with for a while after I came back here. Uh, in 82, the job came up at the university, and they paid better than the Art Institute. So, And I already fell in love with San Antonio, and the print shop at the UTSA is just an amazing print shop, so I couldn't pass it up. So, Plus, California was getting expensive and crowded. Um, there's uh, Dennis and I working with uh, Jim Broderick on a proof uh, for a print that he's working on. We were, working, we were printing for some of the faculty. Uh, here's Diana, and you all know David Freeman. He's a character who used to do Voices of Art. Uh, he used to publish that. He's down in McAllen at teaching, and he also, I think, runs a, an a artist space down there. One of Diana's prints, lithograph with Sheen Collet. Uh, David Freeman, that's a huge image, it's a 24 by 36 inches. Dennis teaching a print class, here's some students working. That's Alon, Alon's here tonight, and uh, oops. These stones were labeled by Wayne Kimball when he was here. And these are 24 by 36 inches, that's Frankenstone. This girl has more artwork on her arm than she does on the Linoleum block. Russell Stevenson, uh, he's working on a huge collagraph. Um, and Duke Van Trong uh, is doing a woodcut using a router. We had a print club early on. Um, Anita Valencia, um, Ralph Howell, who taught photography at St. Mary's Hall for a long time. Uh, you may not remember Brenda, she was an MFA. This is Diana Cardenas, myself, Peggy Jackman, who unfortunately passed away some years ago, Princess Cook, some of you may remember Princess Cook, Dennis Olson, and anyway, we had a good time. And it, as you can see, we named the press at UTSA Tortilla Press. Um, when I did the project with Dr. Romo, where we printed a, a whole series of prints for Hispanic and Mexican-American artists. Um, he asked if the shop had a chop, and I said, yeah, we do, it's Tortilla Press. He wasn't going for that. But, uh. <laughs> Marie Nishimura was another student who was at the Art Institute, and she basically was a master at ceramics, so she decided she needed to come out to UTSA and become a master in lithography, which she did, and now she's a practicing architect. This gentleman is up in Austin, at a he does designer. Uh, Art Avila is right just six blocks from here, and he and his wife uh, published children's books. Jesse Amato actually made a print. I don't think he'll probably ever make another one in his life. <laughs> I always love to show Duke, because he's my genuine communist graduate student. He, was, uh, he moved back to Hanoi and he's teaching, at, uh, teaching in the art department at the University of Hanoi. So, signed, you know, registered communist. A lot of you know Roxy. Um, she's a, primarily a painter. She always does portraits. This is her self-portrait. And she, for a while, was the director of the Majestic uh, Ranch art program out there in the Hill Country off of 46. 
Heather Ferguson was a BFA student of mine in lithography, and she was the archivist here at the McNay for 10 years, well, 10 or 12 years. She just uh, moved on and got another job. Cruz Ortiz uh, studied with us, and it was at UTSA that he uh, got to use our little letter press. And so now he's gone crazy with letter presses. I think he has about six letter presses in his studio. Uh, Gary Nichols and Janet Floor. You can see behind Gary are some of his prints. He does those. He'll have, he'll have to tell you how he does those from some sort of dye leftovers they're kind of found objects here he's printing somebody else's print and uh, janet floor is at utsa printing proofing the black and white portion of uh, margot humphrey's print who was one of our visiting artists together they formed heron hound press which is a going concern you remember that art pace just had a big show with a catalog uh, for all the work that they've been doing they primarily print for artists that go to art pace but uh, uh, they do print for other people uh, among them, Vincent Valdez. Uh, they've done a lot of prints for him. And when they first started out, just to kind of get their names out there, they did what they call the Exquisite Corpse Project. And it involved, I'm, I'm going to estimate, probably 40 or 50 artists in San Antonio, so that was kind of cool. Uh, so I forget how many individual prints there were, but they involved different artists, as you can see. Carlos was in New Hampshire, so he wasn't able to get me a photograph. And I need to mention him, though, because uh, Carlos is a painter and a printmaker, but he was one of the first printmakers in San Antonio to actually print for other people. In other words, do contract print. He printed for people like Bill Fitzgibbons, and uh, he printed very large-scale screen prints. And uh, so he needs to be mentioned. Lee Green and <coughs> Kathleen Baker Pittman were our students out at UTSA, and they ended up starting Stone Metal Press, uh, which was a pretty potent uh, place. It uh, offered a kind of a community print room. They sponsored exhibitions. They brought in visiting artists. They had artist residencies. They did a national print competition every year. And I think they kind of inaugurated steamroller printing here in San Antonio. And they uh, ran it successfully for about 20 years. Um, did a great job. Anita Valencia, um, again, migrated over from the San Antonio Art Institute, but uh, she measured it, majored in humanities at UTSA. And, um, but she did take printmaking courses. You all know Lloyd Walsh. Mark Peavy. Um, graduated and then taught art at a high school. Was it Marshall High School? Clark. Hmm? Clark. Clark, okay, yeah. And influenced a whole other generation of young artists there. Rose Harms uh, taught uh, book arts and uh, letterpress at uh, the Southwest School for many years. Here's a, uh, we're doing a workshop for the docents, uh, the McNay docents. We had. 80 docents came out. We split them up into two groups. We sent 40 of them to the library to hear a lecture, and we kept the other 40, and we divided those 40 into three presses. Each one of them got to draw on a stone, and then I had my students do all the processing and printing, and so they were able to all draw on the stone. That's uh, Margarito Urquiza, one of our students, and this is uh, Virginia Balderas. And we printed proofs. I think most everybody got a proof. That was pretty fun. Sherry Watson did some fun stuff. Margaret Craig is here this evening. And um, this is what her work looked like then. It was, it's beautiful, beautiful then, and it's beautiful now. She's an amazing printmaker. Uh, Joe Harjo, um, our resident indigenous American, um, this is a self-portrait that he did himself to look like he's wearing a war bonnet. And um, this is a, you, if you're familiar with him, you probably know this series that he did of, we call them monoprints. Um, and this one's entitled, Indian Drinking a Mexican Coke. <laughs> and uh, my wife and I proudly own that one. He tells me that he wants uh, Victoria and I to, he wants to do a new, project with Victoria and I, and he's, it's going to be called uh, Indian Hugging a White Man's Wife. 
Then Meredith Dean came down in the 90s and joined, uh, joined us at UTSA. And of course, then we had three pretty major printmakers there teaching. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and she, her specialty was collagraph. So each one of us, I, my specialty was litho. Dennis's was uh, color uh, intaglio and computer stuff. And then Meredith's uh, specialty was collagraph. So. And like I said, we printed a, uh, a series of prints for the faculty. This is a Charles Field image. Um, uh, Richard Mogus was on the architecture faculty, and that was the time when architecture and art were in the same department. And uh, he had worked with me at the Art Institute, so we invited him to do a print. Uh, Catherine Lee, the McNay's done some stuff with Catherine, and you have one of her sculptures out in the front. We did uh, two or three prints for Catherine. She was a visit semester long visiting artist twice at UTSA. And uh, we can't make those printer's hats anymore because the newspapers are too small. <laughs> can make them for children, but. Judy Baca was one of our visiting artists. This was her first lithograph. Margot Humphrey. And uh, I had the opportunity to teach in Oaxaca for a semester, and uh, this uh, guy was uh, the director of the school that I was teaching at, and he did these beautiful a la poupée mezzotints. And so um, I brought him up to do a workshop for my students. And then, of course, most of you probably realize that I talked the president into uh, funding a program where we could print for Mexican American and Hispanic and Chicano artists and do a, a suite. Um, and so he agreed to do that. So f out of the president's office, they funded the project. 99% of the money went to pay uh, my former students as master printers. Uh, so this is uh, Dr. Romo Arturo Almeida, who's the head of the art collection at UTSA, and then Neil Cox, who had been my former graduate student and became the master printer. Uh, and that's, I think, a Deborah Vasquez image on that stone. Here's uh, Neil inking up an image of Luis Balderas's print. This is cool. You're going to love this. This is Alex Rubio working on a. We Neil made this stand to put a, like this 500-pound stone uh, vertically, and that's Alex working on a drawing. So this is how his drawing progressed on the stone. And that's what the print looked like. Gorgeous, gorgeous print. Deborah Vasquez. Here you can see how all printmaking always reverses because the Amazon shooting the arrow to the right here and then the finished print shooting to the left. Guillermina Zavala, Cesar Martinez. And this is uh, after Neil took a job teaching at Nacogdoches. Um, my other graduate student had just uh, graduated, and so he segued into the master printer role. He, uh, this is uh, Steve Carter, and he's inking up a rainbow roll background for Ricky Armendariz's print. This was the catalog that came out of that show that uh, Arturo put together, and this, we had an exhibition, and most of the artists were able to show up. So those are the artists that were in that. Dennis Olson owned a uh, print studio in Florence and taught classes, summer classes. Other schools taught classes. They rented the studio from him, and, and we set up, a, he set up a situation where we could teach a UTSA class there. So in 84, uh, he asked me if I'd teach the class. So here we are in his house up on a, a hill. It's a hilltop village called Chicalto outside of Bibiana, and we would always bring all the students out there to have a big meal. Um, that's Dennis, that's me, Walter Stahely, Robin Fodness, I think that's Janet Floor back there, and it's Wanda Cavillage, and kind of hard to see. Here we are in the studio. This is the old studio. Since then, they've gotten a new studio, uh, but this was the old studio. Uh, Betty Adams, Walter Stahely, Robin Fodness, and uh, Janet Floor. And then in 1997, I went back again, and we always went on a year when the Venice Biennale was going on. So uh, we'd go up to Venice and, uh, oops. 
I can't remember who these people are, but uh, that's Dennis, Meredith, myself, Victoria, and Dennis is holding our son, Kent, who was nine months old. Wait till you moment. And this is Dennis's daughter, Rebecca, and she's the one that continues to run the program. So that was always cool. Then uh, Juan Mora and I asked uh, Greg, our boss, if we could do a steamroller press project. And so we were thinking about seeing who we could get, like the Holt company, Peter Holt, to you know, lend us a steamroller or something. Of course, if you all know Greg, <coughs> Greg Elliott, he goes, oh, we don't need to get a steamroller. I'll make one. <laughs> so he bought all the steel and, uh, whoops. He made this big roller, six feet wide and six feet tall. And uh, so now we're able to do steamroller prints. This is a, the students here from the print club are working, inking up a print of Ricky Armendariz's. Here they are laying either paper or cloth over the inked up thing. There's the roller about ready to go. And it's run, it's propelled by our forklift out in the sculpture studio. So. This is not Ricky's print, this is one of the students' prints, but, and they're printing that on muslin. So. so now we do steamroller prints, but we do it with our own steamroller. I say we, I, I just retired four days ago, so. <laughs> Speaking of Greg, we did an exchange suite with uh, Nacogdoches, and I was trying to convince him to make a print, but Greg's not the kind of guy that, you know, is going to get out a little stylus and make a little etching and hard ground or something. He, he only works with big metal, you know. He, he owns 17 anvils. So um, I said, well, why don't you just take and get a steel plate and, you know, bang it up and make some marks on it and, you know, maybe weld some stuff to it and, and we'll figure out a way to print it. So he did. And... Uh, Here's a lawn inking and inking it up. This has got like welding marks and he's done some texturing and there's uh, brass rivets and stuff. And here's Greg running. It took a lot of energy to get it through the press. And we have about three inches of old blankets there to give it enough uh, pressure to print. We had to print it on 300 pound watercolor that we soaked for about five days. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he was very pleased actually. And now I'm going to show you some slides of some what I consider up and coming young printmakers. Uh, most of them were my students. Um, Alon Serna, a lithographer, and uh, his wife, Madison Cowles. We're very proud of them because they got scholarships to go back to the University of Kentucky at Lexington. And uh, they finished up their MFA and they've just moved back to town. And I think they're working at La Printeria. Is that correct? Uh, Anthony Runblade, I think, uh, is, uh, you've probably seen him in Red Dot and stuff. He's dynamite. He'll be, he's working at uh, Art Pace. Kayla Littlefield. Uh, what's neat now is now that we're teaching screen printing out there, um, screen printing is one of the things that students can do when they get out of school because they don't have to own a press. That's one of the big problems with printmaking and uh, buying presses that cost as much as a small car and they only have two moving parts. Rafael Gutierrez uh, did a project here, I think artists talking on art here at the McNe. Uh, Vanessa, she used to be Vanessa Delgado, that's a lithograph. Sabrina Alfaro. Aaron Pozos, I think I saw him here today, does beautiful lithographs. We did, like I said, we did a lot of exchange suites. This is the one that Greg did his print for. And, uh, Allison Valdivia, Janae Valverde, and Hiromi Stringer is here tonight. She's a graduate student, and she's not a printmaking pr printmaker primarily, but she's a master at printmaking in other ways. Uh, Coronado Studios uh, was not here in San Antonio. It was up in Austin, but Sam Coronado had that Serrier project, and he, pr he printed, I'm sure, for almost every Hispanic, Mexican-American, and Chicano artist in San Antonio over the period of time that they did that project. And now La Printeria is here in town, and uh, I haven't been out there yet, but they're doing a lot of really interesting community stuff. Um, 
Other people in town, uh, Liz Ward teaches at Trinity and uh, is known more for her gorgeous, sensitive watercolors and things, but she has done prints in the past. Um, I do prints for my wife every once in a while. It's a lithograph. Uh, John Lee teaches at Trinity. This was a series he did about the Simpsons. Um, and this is, I'm very proud of this because Ricky Armendariz was doing these uh, paintings on plywood and then he was using a router and he would route out images and also words from ballads and things in those. And we were telling him, he said, you know, like you, when you get through with those, you ought to print them or something, you know because you're basically making a woodcut. So we finally convinced him, and so now he's become a printmaker, and he's showing at Patricia's gallery, just had a show. And that's the name of the show, right? Mm -hmm. um, we recently hired Umberto Science, uh, brought him down from uh, Kansas. He's actually a Mexican artist, and uh, he's gonna be the one that takes over from Dennis and I, and. Uh, and Meredith, and this is uh, my, fa my favorite series of his, excuse me, oops. Um, this is an Aztec god who has been forced to immigrate into the United States and take a job as a gardener. <laughs> He's got a whole series of these, they're pretty cool. And then, uh, like I say, this is not a history of printmaking in San Antonio. There's all kinds of other stuff going on, but I do need to mention that, uh, that uh, this print fair that the McNay has been putting on for how many years, Lyle? 22 years. 22 years is a big stimulus for printmaking in San Antonio. It's really cool. If you ever want to go see a lot of prints in a very small space, go to that. And Lyle was the one that originated the idea for that, and probably 50% of his time and his job is uh, spent organizing this every year. So um, I want to end up by saying that uh, Lyle took right over where John Leeper left off in terms of uh, keeping McNay uh, in the lead in printmaking uh, and printmaking collections, printmaking exhibitions, and things like the print fair. And we're all glad that he's here. So that's it. Thank you. I can take questions here about this presentation, and then after I answer those questions, um, I'm going to walk up to the Lawson Print Gallery, and if you have questions about my work uh, or want me to speak about my work, I'd be glad to talk to you. So, any questions? Yes? Veinticinco? Yes, and I think we still have some of those to sell out at UTSA, so. It just ended up, I think we started out printing for about 32 artists. Some of them we weren't able to finish, and uh, some projects were abandoned. It just ended up that we had 25, and so we figured that would be a good name, so. Any other questions? Thank you all for your patience, and I will see some of you hopefully up in the in the print gallery. You all know where the Boston Print Room is. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you.